Hello everyone, Orville here. This is going to be my experience using the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with AMS. As you may have seen in my previous videos, I have thoroughly enjoyed my two X1 Carbons. Both of my machines came from the pre-order and not the Kickstarter phase of their production. I paid for my machines on August 13th and received them on October 29th. I really wanted these machines to come earlier as I wanted to sell Christmas ornaments and hopefully have those ornaments pay for the machines. I have long wanted to start my own 3D printing business and even got some experience in 2020 when COVID hit. I thought the X1 Carbons were going to be the answer to me starting my business. With the extremely fast near 4 times speed and seemingly unmatched quality, I thought these machines were a no-brainer. When they arrived, they took only minutes to set up. And like everyone else, I was enamored with them. The ease of setting up, the speed, the LiDAR system, etc. I was brought back to my days in engineering class where I first learned about 3D printing and its potential. I had not been this excited to print anything in the last six years. This feeling, however, was short-lived. After just a few prints, and although admittedly several days of print time on these machines, their quality became lackluster. After I had been printing a few batches of my Christmas ornaments, I began to notice some defects in the prints. I thought it was ringing or ghosting at first. It was not. I ran through their wiki to see if there were any fixes, and I did all that I could. I won't go into exhaustive detail here. I'll link to my printables upload where I explain it in a lot more depth. But the TLDR is that I wasn't getting any improvement at all. I then printed the part that you can see on my printables. And it being black and shiny PETG, it really showed me the defect. It was plain as day. No matte texture, glitter fill, or intricate detail could hide it. Just a flat, long-spanning wall to which I could see this defect in. It was then that I began to notice that I could feel the defect. I could actually feel the wavy pattern in the part. I started to go through old models I printed for customers and for work, which I cannot show here, but in those I could also feel the defect, and I could also see them, though they were not as readily visible in the matte and carbon fiber filled filaments. It was at this time I decided to reach out to Bamboo and to the Facebook group to see if I could get some assistance with my issue and to see if I was alone in having this defect. With the post on Facebook immediately gaining traction, I was able to find out that I am not alone with this defect, but that most of the people who have it believed it was a defect with the auto-tensioning system of the machine. I took the back panel off my machine and was able to see that both of my machine's auto tensioners were functioning properly and had no issues. This confused me as I had seen a post where another member was able to fix their defects by correcting this problem. It was at this time that Bamboo responded to my support ticket. They said, and I quote, The patterns shown in your pictures are the belt pattern produced by the occlusion of the belt and the idling wheel during the printing process. In general, Core XY printers are likely to produce this pattern on the print surface, end quote. This is not what I expected to hear. Yes, it goes in line with the theory that is floating around about how the teeth are actually causing vibration by bouncing on and off the smooth idler bearing as the print head moves during the print. Now, talking back with Bamboo, they suggested that I rotate the part to see if it's just a single axis problem or more. After rotating in several orientations, I was clearly able to see that this was on both the X and the Y axis on both of my machines. After about one kilogram of material used in testing, by varying the speed from 50 millimeters a second to 300 millimeters a second, and the accelerations from 1000 millimeters a second squared to 10,000 millimeters a second squared, and the defect was still not going away, Bamboo said they tested my model with PETG and all I would need to do was increase speed from 120 to 200 plus millimeters per second. I asked them why and their reply lines up with the first response saying that the vibration intensity was most prominent around 120 millimeters a second and that they don't yet have a fix for it other than to print faster to avoid the resonant frequencies. 
This was not okay with me. PETG is not such a good material for high flow printing. <clears throat> As such, me going 120 millimeters a second for this print was a pretty hard speed limit so that I could achieve a surface finish and interlayer strength that I wanted. I just couldn't go faster like they suggested. <clears throat> After more correspondence with Bamboo and me showing them that I wasn't the only one who was unhappy with this defect, we agreed that they would refund me for my machines and I would ship them back to them. They would even send me replacement packaging materials so that I could pack the machines back up exactly how they came to me since I no longer had the original packaging. Now, all credit to Bamboo here and their willingness to make it right. I'm not sure if this is going to be the case for everyone or if it was just because I caused such a disturbance on the Facebook group. Which at this point had been shared on the Discord and Reddit and were gaining traction and talk on all three platforms. <clears throat> Either way, I'm glad Bamboo is making it right and was able to work this out with me and I hope in the future they're able to fix this problem and help as many people as possible. I would like to add that this doesn't mean I don't like Bamboo or their products anymore. Uh, it's actually quite the contrary. As a company and in concept, I love Bamboo and the Carbon. I'm just not so sure I should have jumped aboard the bandwagon and bought two of their flagship printers so early on in their company's lifetime. So lesson learned. I need to do more research and probably wait until the printers are around long enough for people to find bugs and then wait for those bugs to get sorted out. I would still like to see Bamboo's next printer fix this problem and I hope it's a lot smoother of a rollout when they do announce that one. On another note, with these machines going back to Bamboo, my time lapses and regular video upload are going to be on pause until I get a replacement for my machines. Now, I'm not getting a replacement from Bamboo, I will likely be going a different route. And I will continue to do a lot of research on more machines to replace them with. With that being said, let me know in the description any suggestions you guys have of high-end machines, not quite Stratasys level, um, but higher-end machines that I can look into that have similar features and specs. And then let me know if you guys want me to do another review of other printers. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll keep posting as much as I can in this interim period. Bye.